Hello guys, how is it going? Welcome back to this tutorial. So what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm going to create a uh, MySQL database in AWS and at the end of this video you will be able to connect to it uh, using the Beaver or whatever other database management studio you would like to use. So once we're inside our AWS account, what we're going to do is that we're going to search for RDS. RDS stands for Relational Database Services. So right here, I'm going to click on my instances. I already have two running. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on, sorry, let me just move this. I'm going to click on Create Database. So what we're going to do next is that I'm going to select my SQL on this list and then over here make sure you have selected the latest version for this so right here we have three options that we can use I'm going to use the development test one you can also use the free trial one but this is going to be depending on what you're using this for if you like me are going to use this for a laddable API I suggest that you use uh, this option because the free tier one is uh, going to maybe give you some errors once you try to connect your database to your API. So over here, we just have to set any name. So for example, this is going to be the name of my database. And right here, you, you have the option that you can uh, make your own username and set your own password. So I'm just going to do this. So that's it. You can also choose to auto-generate the password if you like uh, to do so. So right here, these are the classes like what capacities your instance will have. For this purpose, I'm only going to use uh, one of the, well, actually it is the smallest class that you can use and it is the micro uh, instance. So I'm going to set that, but if you're going to be working later on some like big production stages, I suggest that you use uh, one of these. But as for right now, uh, this will do. This is just for like development purposes, so it's going to be okay. Right here in storage, we're going to select the general purpose SSD, and we're going to select the minimum storage capacity. So this option right here, you can use it if you want to upgrade your database storage once it reaches your limit. So that is going to be okay. So if you're following this example because you're going to build a laddable API, you might want to check this. Uh, I had some errors before that get thrown when this option is enabled. The bad thing about this is that it's going to cost, but I suggest that you use this. Uh, after you use your database for whatever you want it to for your testing or whatever, I suggest that you turn uh, your database off because it's going to keep you costing you money if you leave it turned on. So, and if you're not using this for the Laravel API, you can just try to not create this standby instance and see if that works for you. So right here on connectivity, we're going to use the default option, which is the one that's right there. Also, we are going to select uh, this dropdown. This is our security group, the default one, and I'm going to make this database accessible so that we can access it from outside other AWS instances. And as for the security group, we're just going to use the default one, and this is the one. So right here, I'm, we're going to use this password authentication for this example. Additional configuration, you can go over this. These are just like other options if you want your backups and monitoring or whatever. I'm not going to touch it right now, so that's okay. So, as I told you, the cost of using this multi-AC instance actually uh, brings the costs like double the price. So, I suggest that you do some research and see if you need this. In my case, I needed to use it for my Laravel API. So I suggest that you check that and so you don't have to pay anything more than you, what you need. So this is it, I'm going to create my database. So right here, our instance is going to be creating. So we just have to leave it there for some few minutes. So this took like 10 minutes for it to complete. And what we have to do right now is that we have to create a security group so that our database port X is exposed and we can access the database. 
to do that, we're going to search for VPC. And then on the left side menu, we're going to scroll down and select security groups. We're going to create a security group. The name is going to be And the VPC, I'm just going to choose the default one. Okay, so the security group was created and we're going to click here. It's going to take us directly to the detail of the new security group. So on the inbound rules, we're going to edit these rules. We're going to add rules. And here we're going to search for the MySQL option, which is right here. And the source is going to be from anywhere. Then we're going to save the rules. And that's it. So right here, our port is now going to be exposed. We have to go back to the RDS menu. We click on our new instance. And right here we have to click on modify and then we're going to scroll down and right here we have to add our new security group which is going to be this one I just created so that's it we're going to click on continue and we're going to apply these changes immediately so right here is going to say that it's adding our new security group so we are just going to wait for a minute Okay, so I just refreshed this page and it is now active. So once this is done, we're going to go to the Beaver or whatever database management studio you would like to use. I'm going to open a new connection and I'm going to click on my SQL. The server host is going to be this one right here that you can find on the detail of your new database instance. The port stays the same. The database is going to be empty because we didn't create any. And then you're going to fill your username and your password that you use for when you created your database instance. So now we're going to test our connection. And that's it. So right here, I'm just going to click finish and I'm going to have my new, my new database here. So right here, we can create a new database. I'm just going to create an example one. And that's it. So on my next video, I'm going to create another database and I'm going to start creating tables on my Laravel API. We're going to use Migrate from Laravel and we're going to start working with real data. So guys, just as a reminder, remember that you have to stop your database instance if you don't want to be charged for it. In my case, which I chose the AC zones, I am being charged for this. It is not on the free instance types. So to stop an instance, all you have to do is you click on it, you're going to select it, then you're going to click actions and you're going to hit stop. So that's it. You can create a snapshot if you want or you can just start it, stop it right there. So this way your data is going to persist, like you're not going to lose it. Just remember that the next time that you turn it on, it might take like some little time for it to be ready, but you won't be charged for the meantime that you don't use it. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot. If you have any doubts or questions, please use the comment section below or hit me up on Twitter. I'm going to leave my username in the video description. And thanks a lot. Have a good one.